G'day guys, welcome to True Footy. Today, doing a little video, just reacting to the recently announced news that Michael Voss is taking over as senior coach of the Carlton Football Club. So obviously this comes following the news a few weeks back that David Teague was going to be sacked from his role with a year remaining on his contract. And this obviously follows a pretty disappointing season from Carlton's perspective where they finish 18th with eight wins. It's probably been a case of the progression improvement has been too slow or even stagnant at times. And David Teague did not survive his entire contract. Was he given it enough time in the role? Probably not. I still think it's a pretty green list and perhaps a little bit overrated in terms of how ready to go it was. I'm more so talking about the fact that a lot of their, their players that they need the improvement from are still pretty raw. There's still obviously a lot of potential in the list as it is now, but the expectations placed around the, the speed of improvement were probably a little bit unrealistic in hindsight, in my opinion. They've also probably had some list management decisions that haven't quite gone their way in terms of who they've spent their money on. They've spent you know over a couple of million dollars combined on some flankers in Saad Williams, Jack Martin, and Mitch McGovern. They haven't really panned out just yet. Obviously, some of those players have been on the list longer than others, but regardless, I still think across the board, Carlton are lacking players in their prime, and the players that are in their prime are usually either injured or you know horribly out of form. That being said, judging from the consensus from Carlton fans, from what I could gather, and I do tend to sort of trust the vibe from the supporter base more so than my own observations, they felt they'd seen enough, generally speaking, and that it was the right time for Teague to go. I'm sure there are a lot of Carlton fans out there that were pro Teague, but from what I could tell, more often than not, they wanted to look for a replacement. So my position was that I thought that they should stick with Teague for at least the rest of his contract, unless a really good candidate sort of kept, became available. And it appeared it might go that way when Alistair Clarkson sort of announced that he wasn't going to be coaching Hawthorne next year. Carlton bit the bullet, they ended up sacking Teague and went hard after Clarkson and ultimately failed. Now them failing to get Clarkson is obviously not a reflection on the Carlton Footy Club, it was just bad timing. I think Clarkson's well and truly earned a year off and I think that's exactly what he intends to do. Then it looked like the Blues were going after Ross Lyon and judging from the media vibe around that time, it really felt like that was going to go ahead. It felt like Ross Lyon was going to be the new coach of Carlton. I think the way the Ross Lyon thing sort of unraveled would be kind of disappointing. It's not really clear exactly why that negotiation broke down, but there's a little bit of innuendo that perhaps Ross Lyon had thought he was more guaranteed of the job than he was rather than going through a selection process. And further to that, it sounds like Lyon wasn't particularly particularly impressed with the selection process that was going to take place. From what I've heard, and I'm not sure if it's entirely true, but it sounds like Carlton were a little bit concerned with Ross Lyons, you know, non-football related stuff. Obviously, he's been in trouble in the past in terms of PR, I won't really get into that, but long story short, it seemed like, you know, their plan B, their second preferred coach after Alistair Clarkson, Ross Lyon. That too had sort of gone down the drain. So from a recruitment standpoint, things weren't looking too great in terms of Carlton getting the targets that they wanted as head coach. And you know, further to that, obviously Clarkson and Lyon didn't work out, but the Blues apparently, you know, approached Brad Scott and Nathan Buckley, and they obviously didn't enter the selection process. You can understand those two. Brad Scott, I think, was been given a general manager of football role or whatever is accepted recently, and Nathan Buckley's just come off a long period of coaching Carlton's biggest rival. So like Clarkson, I wouldn't be surprised if he takes, you know, more than one year out of the game. Then allegedly Carlton have gone back to Alistair Clarkson and made a last ditch attempt to get him to coach the footy club. But he turned around and said, no, I really can't do it this year. Then sort of later in the process, Michael Voss became one of the sort of late favorites to take the job. And that's ultimately who they decided on. It sounds like he beat out guys like Adam Kingsley and Daniel Gere and Syracuse for the head coaching role. Now, without offering too much of an opinion on Voss just yet, it's just generally speaking off the bat, that doesn't really strike me as the most successful recruiting campaign. Now, if you believe what you read in the media, apparently the Blues approached Collingwood and asked them for advice on the way that they were conducting their head coaching recruiting process. And that to me is just iffy, not so much because of the Collingwood factor. I know that Collingwood are their rivals. I don't really care about that so much, but obviously it just doesn't instill 
a real sense of confidence that they know what they're doing. This, like any other recruitment of a head coach, is a really, really important decision that can shape your club for the next five years. So look, Michael Voss could be the best man for the job. I'm not saying he won't be, but if I was a Blues fan, I'd be a little bit underwhelmed with the way this process has played out. So let's talk about Michael Voss for a second. Obviously, he is a triple premiership captain. He's a Brownlow medalist and and had an illustrious 289 game career. He is going to be remembered as a great of the game for what he did on field. He had five all Australians and five best and fairest I'm informed by this article. In terms of his coaching career, it didn't really translate. I think he took on a head coaching role pretty young. I do recall back in 2009, he had signed a deal with the West Coast Eagles as their midfield coach from memory and then sort of backflipped when the Brisbane head coaching gig became available. And undoubtedly, you could argue that the Lions were probably considering Voss largely because of who he was rather than because he was necessarily the best man for the job at the time. And I think that ultimately probably did him a disservice because I'm not sure you could say he was fully ready for that gig. They started okay, they made the finals in 2009, but then Voss would then oversee the Lions during one of the bleakest periods of their history. That was around the period of the go home five at the end of 2013, which I believe was his last season. Ironically, Sam Doherty is gonna be his captain now, who was one of those go home five. Now I'm not bringing all that up to sort of pot Michael Voss. If anything, I think you can't really blame one man for that. I'm sure there were a lot of different circumstances that went into the unraveling of the Brisbane Lions at that time. And regardless, that was a long time ago. The game has changed and he has spent the last seven years at a relatively successful club at Port Adelaide under Ken Hinckley, who's a very experienced coach. And I certainly don't believe that coaches should be tainted with you know the results of their previous stints. At the end of the day, coaches are just people and like anyone else, they need time to grow into a role and can often do better with a second chance than they did with the first. He's also so much more prepared and mature for the role that he's been given now than he was at the Brisbane Lions back in 2009. What makes him different to Teague is probably that experience. He's got probably one of the more experienced uh, assistant coaches going around at the moment in the AFL. So Carlton have at least acquired someone that has done it all before. And to some extent, Voss having gone through it all and perhaps made some mistakes in the past, he can learn from those and really help Carlton build in the future. For me, what I think Carlton still lack is probably some maturity and particularly in that midfield sort of range. And it looks like they're linked to an Adam Chera or George Hewitt or potentially both this off season. So I think those would be two really good acquisitions. And I, I do think that Voss has enough to work with here. He just needs time and you know, he's been given a three year deal here. So hopefully from a Carlton perspective, he gets to see the fruits of what has been you know, a pretty grueling rebuilding process. Anyway, guys, let me know what you guys think. Overall, I guess my overall take is Michael Voss may be the right man for the job, but from a Carlton perspective, their recruiting process probably hasn't gone to plan A. But anyway, guys, let me know in the comments what you think about this acquisition. Let me know if there's anything you agree with or disagree with in the video here. Getting closer and closer to grand final day, guys. Can't wait to see you all on Saturday for the big grand final live stream. Take care of yourselves till then, guys, and I'll see you soon.